Yes. Follow me. Yeah. If I just move these, it should do anything. Surely. If you change it, it doesn't make a sound. Is that what you have to do? Yeah, let's see. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Fantastic. Perfect, okay. No worries. It should be easy. I'm just outside. Okay, thank you very much. I should You're be okay. Have a good talk. Thank you. Okay. Well, for having a warning, I thought it was. Oh no! I it was, uh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, Thank you very much. Um, back to right now. No, we're uh, toward the end. When, uh, well, yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 Um, do you want anything? Yeah. 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 Thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah? It's good. How's it going today? Good? Yeah. You enjoying it today? Yeah. Yeah, no, clearly. You say, yeah! <laughs> um, how many developers in the room, just to have a sense of... Too many. 
Um, uh, is it three online? Can I start? Hello everyone. Um, so uh, the session that we are going to uh, you're going to present today is um, is about chatbot. But uh, so I'm mentioning to you, but please forget about this because it's not about you, your website, your data, your content, and a new way of serving it. It's not just for developers, actually it's not for developers at all, but for developer is good because you will be ahead of analysts. Hello, uh, I'm Gabi or Gambri or Gabriele. Um, I'm a, a Drupal developer at Manifesto. I've been a Drupal developer for quite a while. Um, I like Drupal, PHP, I don't know all this kind of stuff. Uh, currently I'm experimenting with chatbots and with encryption. And I always put one of these things on my slide. I'm watching Altered Carbon, which is a TV series. If you like it, if you, well, if you, if you don't know it, uh, watch it because it's cool. Um, again, as I said today, we are going to talk about serving your content. Um, so historically, uh, we have some ways of serving our data, our content, uh, digitally. Uh, one of them was uh, through uh, our website, another one is through a mobile app, some of the uh, companies you work for or you work with, um, they have, may have a mobile app. Uh, social media, so you can share your content on social media so people can read your article or your, your uh, FAQ or, or whatever your website does in the social media and not coming on the website. RSS is an old way. Uh, people can subscribe to your feed and reading it in, in their RSS reader. Um, RESTful API is kind of, let's say it's new, it's not really new, but I said it's cool currently. Uh, so you provide your content, not from your website, not from your app, and not from a tool, but just uh, to be consumed by something else, another website or the app. Um, and then by email, I mean, probably you have a mail system which sends a newsletter to the client, to, to, to the user, to your customers. So again, you save your content not from your website, not from, from the app, but they read it directly on the email. So this has been the, the, the uh, view for quite a while, but now we have a new uh, player in the game, which is um, chatbots and personal assistant. Again, uh, don't think of these as, uh, as a new item or, or I have to add a new um, uh, element on my website, so uh, increasing the complexity. It's not, it's just a way a user, uh, for, for a user to access your data uh, in a conversational approach. Uh, on this example, a uh, user is asking, how can I get some help? And the bot is replying, have you tried our portal, right? And they usually say, no, where about specifically? And the bot say, follow this link. How many times you have received or your clients have received an email saying, look, come in a website, I can't find this thing, uh, can, you, can you help me? And at the end of the day, just say, send a link. If this can be done by a bot, it's going to save your time. And then you keep going, uh, thanks, can you send it on my favorite? It's done, and we're going to do dashboard next time. So um, how many times you have to train your user to use their own dashboard? Or you send them to an FAQ page. What if you can do the same in a different way? What if you can save all your FAQ section directly through a chatbot? Uh, to give you some example of implementation, so those are normally questions that all your users uh, um, uh, are asking to themselves, or the user are asking directly to you about your website. So it's not your business, it's not something new, it's something that they can find on the website. How can I get registered to an F event? This is a normal FAQ page if you have a campaign on the event website. And you know, um, use the tab register on the right from the desktop and then on the last section on mobile, you will find the registration form in there. This is the normal FAQ, right? So the user, to find this answer, has to click, has to find the FAQ link, click on the FAQ link, search for the answer, find the answer, and then read it. What if he can ask directly, he or she can ask um, directly to a bot? Um, you have a campaign website, when it's uh, run for fun, 2018 going to happen in reply, because it's a chatbot, we can add metadata, it's a rich, full experience, so we can provide text as well as a link. In this case, this checkout or delete is it's a link to a specific section. 
I was from Camden this weekend, so uh, this is an event. And again, the, the, the user is asking for information, specifically happening this weekend in Camden Town. Um, so on our website, we have this information, and we know the, um, the Dreamers are, are playing at Camden Lock. Again, because it's a rich, full experience, now we can provide direct link to the location, so clicking on Camden Lock. They can potentially go directly on a Google Map or the directions. Um, Saturday at 9 p.m. Uh, is, is a calendar. They click and it saves on your calendar. So you have the control of your, you have, you have your data, you have the control of the answer in an easy way. Um, more example, you have a, everybody has articles on the website, I mean, everybody has articles. So, uh, what if we can provide this article on the chatbot. The user is asking latest news about cinema. The chat is saying, look, there is an action in Matrix again. And then again, the chatbot is pulling data from other websites, like in this case, IMDB and um, Rotten Tomatoes um, for the rating of the movie. Um, and then saying, say skip to scroll to the next result. So it's a list of articles and the chatbot knows how to let the user scroll between all the information. Another example is how many websites, how many of your websites or websites that you worked on or that you know about, they have a search. Any website they have a search. What if we can provide the same experience of a search through a chatbot? So instead of the user clicking on search, doing the form, accessibility problems, and then you find it, then it's a long list. What if we can have just the user ask, best properties in Mia show image? Because the user made a, a search before, we know that he's looking for a single bedroom with a price range, for example. So we show, we basically, basically make, we make a search on our website and we reply with the most usable information. So it's, it's exactly what your website is doing at the moment, it's just in a more friendly way, smart way. Again, it's a new uh, player in the game. And now last example, which is, is going to help us to explain a bit more about chatbot. Um, uh, think about um, you are a, a, a um, um, housing association. How many times uh, your customers or your, your um, um, the, the people on your apartment they are asking for how can I get my bonnet fixed? How many times? It's like, it's like massive. Uh, how can I get this fixed? Where I can find this information? The user doesn't know anything about the user. Sorry, the bot knows anything about the user. He's replying, look. I know you, I know that you have, I have to change your, your, your boiler, so I will skip all this branch information. Call this number from your registered mobile, because I know who you are, so call this number just per se, so you can book an appointment. Um, so this is basically what, uh, how a chatbot works. Um, so a, a user asks a, 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 an information, a question, it doesn't have to be a question, but ask a piece of information in a conversational way, and the bot replies. How is it done? So the magic is done by something called NLP, uh, Natural Languages uh, Processor, or um, the process is Natural Languages Processing. The user is asking, how can I get my boiler fixed? Um, so the NLP understands what the user intent is, and the NLP will try to extract entities from the user uh, sentence. The entities is like, boiler and fixed because I can ask my fridge to be installed. It's the same entity, it's the same intent I want to support with different entities, fridge and in installed. And then understand a bit of more ma managing the context of the conversation that we will see in a second. Intents, how can I get my boiler fixed? We know that the intent of the user is maintenance and request. So when we, when we create chatbots, the first thing that we do is we define intents. In this example, the intent is how can I get my body fixed? Uh, sorry, the intent is maintenance request. How can the user express the maintenance request? Can you fix my boiler? I need my boiler fixed. I need you to fix my boiler. And we provide all these examples to the NLP to consume. So he can be smart when the user asks a question. The more example we give, the more smarter the NLP will be. And then what the um, processor does is, more or less, we'll see that probably it's a bit different later, but more or less, it takes the uh, user question, how can I get my boiler fixed? And it check one by one on the lines if it match anything. It does match, how can I get my boiler fixed? So the NLP say, perfect. The user is intent is maintenance request. 
Um, sorry, this is a spoiler. Uh, entities. So now we know that the user is asking maintenance request, but which kind of maintenance request? For what? Right? So um, we don't really uh, add um, utilities. So these phases of utilities, we don't really add utilities in the, in the already, already um, um, uh, full way. We use, uh, we use placeholders, right? We say, can you task my appliance? Uh, I need my appliance uh, task. This is because um, the NLP understand entities. So the, as I said, the user can ask to have something about my bowler, my fridge, my w whatever it is. So uh, from the phrase, how can I get my appliance task? We can say, this is a maintenance request, but when the user asks, swap with placeholder. We think like, on appliance, the user may ask, how can I get my boiler fixed? How can I get my oven, microwave, fridge? So anytime the, the user sees something, um, uh, see this phrase, the intent is maintenance request, but then appliance, it's boiler. And same for task. So when the user asks, how can I get my boiler fixed? The intent is maintenance request. The appliance is boiler. Um, and the task is, um, can be mapped one of them. Uh, NLP has something smart, so not always something can be, um, can be uh, uh, restricted to a single term. For example, fix, repairing, right? How many, uh, with, with, how many combinations we can describe repair? A lot of them. Repair, fix, adjust. In the conversational way, you have more examples. What is this? Is, can I get it fixed, adjust? So um, the NLP understand uh, synonyms, synonyms. Um, so we said that the entity is repaired, but the user may say fix, adjust, whatever it is, still understand this are repair. So we're asking how can I get my boiler fixed? Intent is maintenance request. Entity appliance is boiler, entity task is repair. So the NLP maps the intent, it maps the entities, and it takes care of your context. Um, it's important that you understand this because I will show you one example of NLP, but they all work on the same way. So as long as you understand the context, not this context, as I understand the topic, then you, will, you, you may be able to work with any of them. Um, so context. Context is, 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 I mean, it's about our language, right? So if I ask you a question, right, uh, uh, are you enjoying the, 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 the Drupal camp? And you say yes, right? Yes. Is a phrase that you are telling me, so I think intent, your intent is affirmative, you are saying yes. But yes has different meaning depending by the context, right? Um, so, for example, we, the user is asking at this bit, and um, how can I get my bullet fixed? We need more information, and this information may have a meaning only inside the context. For example, um, if we are really housing association and we know that we the user is asking for maintenance requests and replacing the boiler, we don't know who the user is yet. So we have to ask, okay, who are you? And can I have your account number? Yes, my account number is this one. So now we know who the user is. This has different meaning in different situations, right? But as a group, now we know the user one, two, two, three, three, four, four, or maintenance request, repair the boiler. Um, so we keep saying, and why we keep um, grouping? So this is a, it's a, it's a talk, it's a conversation, and every time, uh, 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 until the conversation is not finished, so both parties, they're not happy, we keep pushing data to this context, so we enrich the context of information. Uh, thanks, is it very painful for your main property? Maybe in this housing association, they have a user can have multiple properties, like a flat and a garage or an office. Yes, it's for my main one, so we know even what the property is. But at this point, we have everything. We just have to book the appointment. Is this appointment, does this slot work for you? Yes, the user say yes, it does. The conversation is finished, and we can clear our context. So the context is a place where we push information through our, um, our process of talking with the user. So we pass through multiple intents, but within the same context. When we finish, we clear the context. Is it clear so far? You can say no, don't worry, you can say it. Um, this is one of the examples, so this um, professor, this provider is called Dialogue Flow. Uh, is a, a, everything that I already uh, mentioned to you. Uh, this is the example how you can, um, how you can um, describe your intent. 
So the intent name is maintenance support, we already saw it. Normally on a processor, the intent name must be unique. So when you build your intent, the user wants uh, reading FAQs, search on my website, maintenance support is only one and unique in your process. And then the utilance, as an example, as you can see, um, while you type, it maps the entities for you. So fix, 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 change are our task, and the orange bit are our um, uh, appliances. So this is an example of um, what I described in a, a, a real product, and as you can see, it's fairly easy, you type and understand, and um, it's, not, it's not scary. Um, so this is um, um, so this is the NLP, which is the one that does all the logic, and this is uh, it's the chatbot itself. So normally the NLP does all the, it's the brain of the situation. The chatbot is the one that communicates with your user. Um, it can be the device, for example, Google Assistant or Alexa. It can be, it can be um, a client, a, a chat client in your website. It can be a Facebook message. It can be a bottom slack. It can be everything. And then basically it's what the output and takes care of the conversation um, with your user. So on this equation, we have three um, points, we have three nodes and three players. The user, which is asking, the NLP, which is understanding and translating to a machine-friendly uh, uh, um, approach, and the chatbot, who does the logic of whatever it is, sending an email, uh, replying with a link, or booking a, a slot. Um, it's beautiful so far. Now let's give a real example. So this is this is a real example. A client, um, one of our clients had a Drupal 8 website and said, look, I have some content which I think is really useful if it's um, provided through uh, an Alexa um, Echo device. Um, and can, can, can you do it? Can you say, what was that content? What was a list of events, right? C uh, categorized by, by location. It's pretty easy, I mean, yeah, we build a skill, a couple of intents, search, and then say yes, and then say no, and say I like it. And then we did it, we finished, it's brilliant. Can we do the same for Google Home? Uh, okay, yes, we built exactly for Alexa, but yeah, uh, let's do it for Google Home as well. And we did it, and then he asked, can you do it for Facebook Messenger as well? And we said, but you know, this is, this is voice, the other bit is like your type. And the client said, uh, the user is asking uh, a question, right, which is conversational. It's the same on Excel on Facebook messages. Why is so? Why is different? Why can't you do it? And they were right. I mean, it's the same thing, just from a different device. And they ask, look, as we are there, just can we have this chat on our website as well? So we said, uh, okay, we have to think. So it's the same thing. It's a chatbot. It's a different way of serving it, but the logic and the equation is the same. User, NLP, and chatbot. Um, that's why we build the chatbot API, which is a Drupal module. The basic is, is a layer um, that where, where it, it lets you expose the content of your website to a huge number of platform and chatbot. So it makes your website chatbot friendly, basically. And in fact, after that we built chatbot API, uh, we figured it out it was quite easy to implement with all these platforms and much more. Um, which uh, I have to say for, for uh, the disclaimer, uh, BotKit, with two, it's, it's a Node.js, it's a JavaScript bot that you can implement almost anywhere on your website as well as on a mobile by app. The integration is coming soon. So you can integrate with all of them just with a single module on your website. So our equation, equation. is changing a bit. So now we have a new uh, item in the, in the mesh in the web, which is Drupal. So now the user talks with either the NPA or the chatbot, even with dialogue flow, the example that I show you the product or Alexa, it first pass through your website and it's your website serving the content. Um, so a few features about chatbot. Um, intents are plugins. Uh, so this is for uh, developers. Close your eyes if you're not a developer. Um, so um, uh, it uses the, the flexible Drupal plugin API to serve intents. I will show you how easy it is to build a plugin, 
engine plugin and how is this to implement the logic of your website and expose the data of your website to an intent. Uh, entities from your data, so we saw what the entities are, right? Um, and it can be, it, if you think about your website, think about your website, think about your taxonomy. If you have a huge taxonomy, you know, writing back all the entities on the NLP could be a long job. That's what API uh, does it for you. So if you have entities, and you want to expose these entities inside the user intent, that's what API push the data for you. Uh, use integration. Uh, how many of you are, understand what views are uh, on the Drupal world? So views is a way of listing your content, listing thing, let's say. If you want to list your news, if you want to list the title of your news, or if you want to list the most active user, you do it through view. So when we saw the example of the articles, and um, Kevin tell me the news about cinema, right? On our website, how would we do it? We would do it with views, and we list like the three most recent news about cinema. Um, you can do the same in the chat board with views. I'll show you an example in a bit. And then Dialogo and Alexa, uh, Dialogo and Alexa are out of the box. And again, it's a whenever you see conversation somewhere, you know that through chatbot you can um, you can you can expose your website to this because chatbot API give you like the sub layer for any conversational integration. Again, into the plugin, again, Drupal developer spoiler, close your eyes if you're not. Um, so this is a basically, uh, it's a plugin, it's the way you, you create um, uh, an intent in Drupal in the technical way, you can, you can do it even not on the technical way. Um, so it's a plugin, this is the plugin ID, it's the intent name, what we saw before, the machine name of the intent is the plugin, and then you put your logic and then you add the response. We are gonna use this in a second. Entity push, again, this is to push the entities from our website to the NLP, to the NLP, to the uh, logic of our equation. Uh, you select, in, in this example, I have some topics, right? And I want to select the topics which are taxonomy terms by the way on my website. And I can even select a field for the um, synonyms. Um, is it correct? Yeah, maybe it is. Um, and then I decide uh, how to push and where to push. I want to push to API.ai, which is the old name for dialogue flow. Um, this is an example. So these are the topics that I have on the LLP. I have urgent and family and important. I want to add a topic for work. Like I have messaging on my website and I want to categorize my messages. And the work tag for my message is missing. Message or, or email. So I just work. Which are the synonyms for, for work? Office, studio, company. Um, so, uh, and, and basically, when you save something or when you delete something in your Drupal website, everything, it has to pass through a cron job. So I'm sure you know, I'm forcing running cron. Um, and then when you save something, everything is pushed to the NLP automatically. So you, have, you don't have to take care of the integration. By refreshing, it's there, ready for be used for you to be used by uh, your user. Um, I mentioned the use integration. Again, when uh, a chatbot, uh, so when a user asks, uh, give me the properties on shortage, as I said, how would you implement on your website through a search and listing search results? This normally Google is done by views. So when the chatbot replies, uh, I found this beautiful property. Do you want to know more about this property or skip to the next one on the search results? This is, um, for the ones that you are familiar with, with Drupal, this is a view with pagination where you are listing one item per page. So it's a pagination of a website. Instead of showing 20 results, you show one. And then the click to next, it's going to show the next one and the next one. When the user want to know more, it would be like clicking on a search result and you read more about the user. So it's the same content of your website. It's the same experience, so just in a different way. Um, I don't know what this is, to be honest. Um, it's the same slide as before, just because you probably could. Um, 
So I'm going to show you an example. Uh, in, in the example that we have, uh, I'm using these housing association, um, housing association uh, topic, right, example. And I built a, a chatbot, it's called Drupal Concierge. What Drupal Concierge does, it takes care of, um, it takes care of um, uh, how can I fix my bonus for maintenance and support, as well as takes care of what Concierge does. It, it takes care of your parcel and your mailbox. So on the visual integration that I show you, I'm using Google Assistant. Okay, let's get the test version of Drupal Concierge. <laughs> Greetings. Show me the messages. Tom has called you today at 9.30. Do you want to know more or skip to next message? Skip to next message. Your wife is reminding you to eat. Do you want to know more or skip to next message? Skip to next message. No messages. So again, um, it could look weird what these are, these messages are on my website. They are uh, content, they are a piece of content, they are like articles. I create a content type on a Drupal website called messages, right? And these are the messages that they exist on the website. Uh, they're not categorized. I could categorize them and say, um, give me my work messages, or I can say office messages using a synonym, or I can say, give me the urgent messages. It's going to reply. It's a view, so it's listing messages. It's just providing one search result per time. But what I'm doing here is, I'm on your website. If you think about your website, I'm going to your website and then a search. I saw the first result, and I say, next. And then another result that says next, and then the last one is the on the Drupal again closing article on Drupal developer. This is the no result block that you add on Drupal. So uh, to do this, uh, I just used this bit. I didn't use anything else. So it's my content plus this view, and it does this integration. Okay, let me skip this. I don't know. Um, so again, it's. Um, it's supposed to be a content, it's just a different way, but it's still serving a content. Uh, I, I, I want to give you a, boy, a bit of um, tips and tricks when you plan uh, to serve your content through a chatbot. Plan your intents in advance. So uh, don't, if you have a website, don't just say to the developer, can you make it readable by a chatbot? Uh, you have to think about it like a mini project or a campaign is as important as a campaign. What do you want to serve from our content? What do you want to serve the events? Uh, are the events uh, ready to be served? How would you use a search for our events? So you have to think about the earth utterances, utterances uh, the phrases that the user may ask, which is a really difficult task. Don't think that you know the answer. It's not. Uh, a website like answerthepublic.com can help you. So what this website is, if you're not aware, is basically collecting all the uh, search, um, the, 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 the keywords the users have been searching for by topic, which is really important. For example, to do the examples of my, uh, uh, how can I get my body fixed, I went in, in this website and I searched for support and maintenance. And it gave you all the list of questions the users have been asked which they are crazy. They have no idea what the user can ask when they're seeking for support and maintenance. Um, this is really important because you have to train your bot, so almost all the platform, they give you a way to training your bot. So there is a bit of artificial intelligence on the bot, but they are, really, they are pretty dumb. Um, so uh, training your bot, you normally have a place with all the unmatched uh, uh, questions the users uh, ask, ask in, in, the, in, the, in the time that you expose your bot. And then on the training, you match. This is this one. This belongs to this intent. So next time a user is asking, uh, it, will be, it will be matched. Additionally, the more you add, the more smarter, the, no, the more smarter, the smarter will be the NLP. So keep adding um, uh, uh, examples and, 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 and utterances and keep training your bot. So um, you have to build your content with, with intents in mind. You can potentially go home now, install Chatbot API and expose your content to a chatbot, but your content may not be ready for a chatbot, so you have to be smart. Um, 
if you have a title with like 25 lines, uh, it, may be, um, it may be too much for a chatbot, so you may want to change the title. You may want to have a specific content only for chatbot. Chatbot, they can provide images, but you know, when, when a user is, is answered with a 2,000 line with two videos and images uh, answer, they can skip and close. So you may want to change some of your fields, some of your content types to be chatbot friendly. Um, in the Drupal world, this, is, this can be done by a specific display mode for your chatbot. For example, you have the display mode, again, Drupal, spoiler, close your eyes. You have, you have um, um, display mode for your full content where you show everything. But maybe you don't want to show for an article, for example. You don't want to show who the author is, what's the date, and how long it's going to take to read the article through a chatbot, because it's pointless, no? So you can create, as you have the full view display mode, and the search display mode, and the teaser display mode, you may want to have one for your chatbot, which may be display a smaller version of your title and a version of your summary without the tags, because HTML markup, because it's completely pointless in a chatbot um, context. Um, and then, uh, I'm pretty much finished. So uh, thank you for everything. Um, uh, I, I, this, this presentation didn't want to be uh, too technical because it has people in a, it's a new world. It didn't want to be um, not really Drupalism and not really Drupalist and not really technical because we're still at the Drupal camp. Um, but what it wants to be is a way for you to go back and think about your content and think about what you can do with your website easily. Uh, I want to mention that um, we may be late, so most, almost all, probably the bank society in the world, they're now using chatbots for, your, for the uh, customer uh, service. Um, most of the companies, general companies, any kind of company in China, they use chatbot to uh, talk with um, users. Um, charities like uh, Christian um, um, Red Cross. Um, they build a wonderful Alexa skill for first aid for, for users. So, um, again, it was to explain you how easy it is and to put you a bit of pressure. So you go home and talk to your bosses and look, I think we need a chatbot. Thank you. <laughs> Any question? Any doubt? Yes? It will be available, so don't care about links, don't care about anything, it will be available online. I will put uh, the PowerPoint version and the PDF version on Drupal.com website. Yes? Um, so, you, you, you use Dialogflow uh, for your NLP part? Yes. And, and then, with a plug-in to that, you can use whatever client uh, or something like Alexa and so on? Um, no, the client, so the, the, uh, the bit for Drupal is just to connect, it's just to expose your content yeah. anywhere and everywhere. You just, you just pull your content up. Dialog flow, it does the integration, so it's the NLP that normally, or you, that normally do the integration with the chatbot itself. So, for example, dialog flow, with just one click, can connect you to Google Assistant and Amazon Alexa and, and Microsoft and Slack and Facebook and whatever it is. And you just connect, it's Drupal connected to Dialogflow in this case, and Dialogflow with a chatbot exposed, whatever it needs yeah. to be exposed. So it handles like all the intents and everything else, the, and the, the natural language processing, and you've got plugins for the different interfaces. Um, does it rely on Dialogflow, or can it use other similar um, like Chatbot API, you mean? Um, the, the Drupal component. Yeah. Yeah, the Drupal component. So out of the box, it connects with Dialogflow and Alexa. Uh, through Botkit, the implementation is coming a second. Uh, through Botkit, Botkit uh, again, it's a JavaScript, so you need a bit of development. But Botkit connects to Watson, Microsoft, and Cortana, which is slightly different for what Dialogflow does, and any kind of bot out of the world. So potentially, as far as I know, you can connect with almost anything. Uh, if it's not covered by the current implementation, 
is out of the box. You can do quite easily. Just a sub layer that can connect to anything. Yes? No, no, I haven't. So um, there are a lot of them. So during this presentation, when I started, I just was working with with Watson and with Dialogflow and with Alexa, um, which have based almost all the code and almost all the documentation about those. But then during the work in the presentation, I figured out there are a lot of them. Some of them are easy, but not to implement, but not really flexible. Other are uh, too really flexible, but maybe not easy to, to connect. I didn't know there was a PHP one. Yeah. Um, and what is it, so the, the, the PHP, so PHP by itself is not um, uh, a synchronous language, so it needs power to like refresh and loop and wait for the users. Um, but yeah, no, I didn't know, I didn't know about the PHP one. Can I check it out? Yeah, I will, I will. Right. Botman, he said. So um, again, this is about the NLP. So you should pick uh, a, a Drupal. It, it doesn't really care because it's Drupal. And then, because Drupal is multi-language, you can use the multi-language capability in Drupal to deal with multi-language. Um, uh, I can say workflows. It must be then NLP that you pick that must be capable of multi-languages. Dialog flow because it's been bought by Google. Uh, it can understand. So currently, up to today. You can talk with 15 different languages. Before the end of the year, they want to increase to, I think, 80. I don't know even if there are 80 languages in the world, but yeah, uh, this book is 87, I guess. So uh, and the way it works is basically the user talk again to the NLP through the chatbot. And when you receive the answer, you say that the, the intent is maintenance support. The entities are these ones, but the language is this language. So when you can reply with your content, you can pick the right language from your data. Yeah. Yes? Excellent presentation. Oh, thank you. I'm going to ruin it with a stupid question. No, no, no. So my content, which people are finding through just Google on their desktop, I have to optimize my data, and then I maybe have to buy some keywords so people discover it. In this scenario, I'm not sure how anyone with an Alexa box would discover my yeah. So um, the way normally chat, unless you implement a chat in a specific way, like in your website, they have to install your, let's call it app. On Alexa, you install skills. There is a skills store that lists all the skills, and it's exactly like your phone. You pick the one that you want. On the example that I gave you through Google Assistant, the Drupal Concierge, it was a, an app that I, 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 I created. Um, for, for the integration. So it's something that you install in your thing normally. So Google doesn't work out which are the most popular answers. You only get discovered if they uh, put in your skills. Yeah, I know, I know what you said. So the workflow, so Google doesn't access your website unless you say, so the way you, you need triggers, the way from the Google Assistant, so it's not Google, you mean Google as a Google Assistant, not Google the website. So on Google Assistant, or you manually activate the app that you want to talk with, or you say, uh, hi Google, please ask to Drupal Concierge, which is your trigger word, how can I fix my boiler? The same for Alexa. You can, Alexa, you can say, Alexa, open Drupal Concierge, or you can say, Alexa, ask Drupal Concierge, how can I fix my boiler? So you need a trigger. It's not done automatically. Google Assistant, it works automatically, but with custom Google things, like searching on the web and, and this, kind of, this kind of search and the responses. To access your app, you have to action it. Thank you very That's much. your question. Yes. If someone said, my boiler is broken, you've got the, the appliance, but instead of fix, they're focusing on the negative, so broken, not working. Yes. It will work, yeah. It will work. Uh, I, don't have, I don't have an example here, I'm afraid. Um, 
uh, it will work. In this in this page down here, you have the list of uh, and you have the list of uh, variables that you're expecting. Some of them they may come as an entity. Some of them they may not come because this is not saying them. Like the, um, um, what's your account? What's your uh, account number? Um, so what you do is basically um, when in an intent you some of your in, uh, entity are required, you set on the MLP those are required. If the user doesn't provide those, prompt these questions. So if the user say, can you fix my wallet for my account ID, which is AA123 and, and my main property, then uh, on, the, on this workflow, like if the user has asked, can, how, uh, how can I get my wallet fixed for my account number, blah, 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 and my main property, the bot would answer only this one, because it has all the information. When anything is missing, you can define, if this is missing, prompt this question. If this is missing, prompt this one. So you complete your context. All of this is done on the NLP. We have normally a nice configuration to deal with missing variables. And in that, uh, if you want to read it at the, at the end, you've got like, a few more extra questions. Uh, yeah, I don't know, yeah. Well, it's scary. Any questions? Other question, yeah. How does it work in terms of, uh, for example, checkout or buying a product? So, uh, again, it's about the NLP. The NLP uh, buying, so money is changing. Uh, it must be allowed to buy the NLP. Some of them they do, some of them they don't, in terms of buying from them. But uh, there are things like, um, the, the, uh, they have different names on different NLP, but you can link the accounts. For example, if you build a web, but this is per, this is, must be planned by the device. It's not just a general chatbot thing. And um, with Google, with Alexa, and with um, Google, and with custom uh, clients, chat clients as well. And um, you can link the accounts, so you can link this specific user having this Alexa device, this specific user having this cookie through this chat to an account. If the user has the credit card linked to the account and they can make any, any kind of purchase they want. It's normally not done by the device itself. It's normally done by your website, and by the chatbot integration, so by the Drupal with. So it will be exactly like a checkout, only with, if the user has an account, and if in this account has a credit card. You can ask the credit card details for the chat, but then, I don't know if it depends by the trust the user has with your chatbot, but potentially you can do it. Again, think it's your website. It's your website. If you do a checkout on your website, you can do through a chatbot. If you do a form on your website, a chatbot asking questions, it's a form. It's more as a form. It's going to be a longer process if it's a big form, like where you live. It's going to be crazy, but yeah, it can be done. Yes? Um, yeah, just following on from that, actually, because it looks like a form, doesn't it? Is there any kind of to integrate the, with the Drupal form API? So yeah. Your form is just, like each question is just part of the form. It is, yeah. Again, it's, it's your website. It's the way you're asking for information. It's the way you're serving content. It's the same concept, just in a different way. Has that been thought about, integrating with the form API? So, so I thought about doing the integration. And it w it's not the end of the world, because you know, when it's a drop down, give the options. With a text field, ask for a question. With a checkbox, give the options and maybe they can select one or more. Um, if you want to contribute, yeah, I will be happy to, to uh, receive a pass, but definitely, yeah, it's, it should be easy to implement. Anything else? Ready for the announcement? Do you want the microphone? It will be recorded. You can read it. Is it me? Yeah, why not? Oh, okay. Uh, so thanks everyone for coming to the camp. Uh, we encourage everyone to attend tonight's social at the Blacksmith and Toffees Maker, a three minutes walk from here. To welcome London has the whole pub and there is a thousand bar tab sponsored by Thunder. So get your few drinks while they last. <laughs> Do it, guys. It's, it's, it's <laughs> amazing. It's normally, if you have a, never, never been uh, at the Drupal camp or um, never at the um, social night, go, because it's, it's crazy. It's, it's, it's very crazy. Uh, that's it. Anyone else? Thank you. I'm here around if you're there. So. You're welcome.
welcome. Take you too. Vincenzo. Ti hai riconosciuto dal mentre ti guardavo là? Sì. Dal... Non so dove ho visto la tua foto, forse su... Eh, se ci ho sentito, ho sì, 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 no, no, sì. sì, sì, mi ricordo. Sì, no, quel progetto si può messo in pausa. Sì. Eh, quindi non ho più visto Shadow. Però continuo solo con Alex e eh, l'integrazione eh, con Alex. Sì. Mm. Però vorrei riprendere il chat box perché ovviamente da questo più possibilità. Ehm perché quella è solamente per Alexa quindi sì. tu colleghi si usano da Alexa invece con chat non si puoi comunque collegarlo con chat non è per forza qualsiasi cosa vuoi sì. ma puoi essere anche il sito stesso che tu vuoi usare tu si può collegare il sito stesso quindi in pratica tu hai un javascript service dentro il sito sì, sì. che è ancora più potkit questo potkit javascript Perfetto, oh. perfetto, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, it was amazing. Thank you, it was perfect, thank you very much. Um, sì, Bob Kitty, um, JavaScript. Um, um, è meglio solo fare con qualcosa di Bob Kitty, che ci gestisce IO, I think, o qualcosa di più. Sì, per te ci stiamo facendo un altro chat, potete... Complimenti. Grazie mille. Ti seguo su Twitter. Bene, non posso dire più le parolacce. Um, sì, io ho detto che non mi ha fatto questo mio. Ehm, um, um, una linea di codice, sì. eh, mentre fa il processing della, della cosa, chiede a Drupal per ogni cosa, sì. poi il Drupal fa il codice. Sì, no, non l'ho pubblicato perché io non sono un mago di... Ma no, non sono un mago di um, NPM, gestione delle sì, dipendenze, quindi non so, c'è cioè, più una questione di logica, dove dovremmo metterlo, dove, dove faccio solo la documentazione, o creo un pacchetto che lo fa proprio. Eh, sì, comunque sì, è semplicissimo. Ho usato il PHP Alexa per il plugin, cioè che significa? Per Alexa non si usava il modulo. Sì. Um, che pensa che io sia la libreria che si sì, sì. Eh, sì, sì. Eh, poi c'è quello, quello che ho raccontato qui è quello sì. che è successo poi non, hanno chiesto di farlo per Google Home e, e l'ho detto cioè, questo è un po', cioè, devo usare una, un layer che gestisca tutto perché se no sì. faccio un'implementazione sì, sì. si esce pazzo no perché la difficoltà che ho usato io è per il prompt non il prompt nel senso che non rispondi mai sì. il next question nel senso più convers conversazione sì. Quindi in pratica Alex legge il ultimo news del mio sito, sì. eh, ce ne sono quattro, non le lette sì o no, con, questo, con quel modulo di difficoltà, che non, la documentazione non è chiara. No, e non, eh, eh, sì, perché è più un modulo per, per fare, gestire contenuti del tuo sito, ma non, non, non dà alcuna logica. E mette il modulo così c'è un po' così più... Eh, quello là è studiato per connettere il tuo sito sì. ad Alex. Chatbot è più... Um, fa utilizzare da un chatbot il tuo sito quindi tutte le, le, tutti i, i scenari che puoi immaginare comuni al realtà il sì. chatbot li copre per esempio sto listing um, eh, pagination non ho fatto il more ma lo devo fare per prendere quando clicchi sì, per per Amazon, perché non l'ho fatto perché in tutte le implementazioni abbiamo fatto tutte le due abbiamo fatto um, eh, dipende dalla logica del sito se loro hanno un display molto per chat se non c'è un display molto per chat è un casino quindi no, non l'ho fatto no, per gli ultimi consigli finali sono stati abbastanza utili nel pensare così eh, eh, ti ripeto è un diverso modo di vedere le cose che già, che già 